Well, it's good to be here. Amen. We got a good rain. I think we had nine inches of rain. Filled the tanks. The creek was flowing. God is good. I really did like that one song about pleading the blood. Uh, a lot of people may not know what that really means, but. When we plead the blood, remember that Jesus died on the cross. Mm -hmm. And when he did, the, they, when they put the spear in his side, the water and blood came out. Mm -hmm. And also, when they, a lot of people don't realize it, when they put the crown on his head, it was a crown of thorns, yeah. and it was not just lightly put on there. When those Roman soldiers put it on, they put it on hard. And in many of the pictures you see shows the blood coming forth. But right. uh, most of the people don't realize it. But the blood of Jesus is so precious. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because had Jesus not done that, most of us wouldn't be here. That's right. And uh, I've been a Christian since 1958, the last Friday night of August 1958. And uh, uh, most of the time I was pretty close to doing what I was supposed to. But, you know, we all have our... Uh, little difficulties, but uh, I have followed the Lord for many years. I've taught in a number of places. Uh, I did pastor a church for about six weeks. A friend of mine had a stroke, and I took over for him. But I'm not a pastor, but I love the Lord and I love the Bible, and uh, I've taught a lot of Bible studies. And over the years, God has taught me so many things. Amen. And uh, uh, today, as we get started. Uh, I have to let you know that I have a script here, but I haven't been known to get off script. <laughs> so I think some of my family knows that too. Uh, not necessarily, but sometimes it happens. And um, let me move this over a little bit. So anyhow, I just want to let you know that God is here today. Uh, do not look at numbers. God has taught me that. Do not look at numbers. Yeah. He looks at quality. He looks at people who want to hear his word yeah. and who want to follow his word every day of their life. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it, it's not very easy to do. In, our, in the day we live in, there are so many things going on that it is so hard to stay concentrated on the things of God. But this morning, let's we'll get the world out and let's, let's listen and see what God has to say. Amen. We're going to talk about seeking God, uh, looking for more of what God has for us and what He expects of us. And uh, over the years, I've found that the one thing you must pray, well, it's more than one, and you must study and read the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot be close to God unless you read the Bible and study the Bible. Yeah. A lot of people read the Bible, but they don't study it. Mm -hmm. And some people have a difficult time. I understand that. But we now have the internet mm -hmm. and use it while it's still we are still allowed to use it before they put a whole bunch of clamps on it. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. So use the the uh, your little devices for Bible study. Yeah. If you if you think of part of a verse, and uh, but you just can't find it in your Bible, the concordance in most Bibles is it's not very complete. But you have a complete concordance on your little devices, yeah. and if you have just part of a verse, type that in, yeah. and most of the time it'll come up with the whole verse, yeah. and you'll be blessed by it. Now we're going to seek God today. We want to draw nigh. Uh, we are told in the Word of God that we are to draw nigh to God, and if we draw nigh to God, He will draw nigh to Amen. us. Amen. Close. I want to be close to God yes. in everything I do. Now, uh, there's a place that, say, that says, uh, I don't have that scripture there, it wasn't part of the lesson, but pray without ceasing. Wait a minute. I, I've got to go to work. Mm -hmm. I've got to go to school. Yeah. No, no. Pray without ceasing. You're in an attitude of prayer. When you go to do your job, you say, you're working on something. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for letting me get here safely. Thank you for a good job. And thank you for my family or whatever. 
it, it's, it's just, it's, a, it's part of your life. God has to become real to you yes. every yes. day. Yes. Not just when you come on Sunday or Wednesday or whatever. Right. He has to be real every day of your life. You walk outside and you hear the birds singing. God, I thank you that, that you've given us that beautiful sound of the birds yeah. and the grass is growing. Right. We, we have to be thankful for what God has done for us. Yes. So when studying the Bible, there are there are three things, that, and if you don't get anything else from our, from our lesson today, uh, these three things must happen, and they must happen in order. Well, it's two things, and then there's a result. First of all, you gain knowledge. Mm. How do you gain knowledge? This is knowledge, mm -hmm. and this is God actually talking. You say, I've never heard the voice of God. If you read the Word, yeah. God talked, yeah. spoke to the men and women who wrote the Bible. Mm -hmm. So when you're reading your Bible, it's God actually talking to you. Yeah. Not audibly, but through His Word. Mm -hmm. And His Word is so important. And I, I believe that one of the things, one of the reasons why our country is in the condition it's in is because Many people had just sort of fallen away, or uh, you know, too many good things to do, you know, too many. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so here they are, the, the two things and then the result. You must gain knowledge. Anything you do, you get the little device, when you first buy it, you gotta figure out what all those little icons mean. Mm -hmm. When you learn to drive a car, you gotta learn all the procedures. Mm -hmm. And that is the way it is. When you read the Bible, you gain information. Yeah. You're learning, you're saying, oh, I learned it. But the problem is, you can read that, but if you don't understand what you're reading, you won't, you won't get the lesson that God wants you to have. Right. So, okay, you, you gain knowledge, and you read, and you study, and you, you keep going over the same thing sometimes to get it in, you know. And then you begin to understand it. So it's gain knowledge, Understand what you've gained, uh, what you've learned, what you've read, what you've seen, what you've heard from sermons, from reading, whatever. And then, over time, you gain wisdom. Mm -hmm. You become wise. And when you go out among, when you go out among your, the place where you work, even when you go to the store, you can talk about the things of God. Right. And unless we have that knowledge, unless we have that wisdom, we don't have the ability to yes. to really let other people know what God is like. Have you ever told Jesus, told, told people what Jesus has done for you in your life, what God has done for you? You know, most of the time it, it's pretty difficult. Uh, I have a friend over in Gonzales, and uh, I mean, he's a go-getter. He always encourages me. I mean, he, he said, I don't care where I go, I mean, I'll tell them about Jesus. And sometimes it's really hard to do. Yeah. And you have to be careful. You don't just blurt out, you're going to hell. I'm, you, better, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying. We have to be, right. uh, we have to use discretion. We have to uh, do it the proper way. Yeah. Okay, so the lesson today is going to be from Psalm 37. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've been going verses 3 through 8 or 89. But before we go to that, I want to give you a verse that, that helped me a lot uh, many, many years ago when I was going through some difficult times. And that's Proverbs uh, 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart yes. and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, God, and He will direct your path. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. With all the things going on in the world, especially for the, the younger generation, there are so many things that can distract you. I mean, you, I mean, well, you, you know what I'm talking <laughs> about. There's any and everything you want. You can get on the internet, you can get on TV, or you can get it in magazines, books, wherever. It, it, and it can take your, it steals your time. There are time stealers, and Satan has ordained it that way. Yeah. He wants to steal your time. Yeah. Oh, I believe I'll go, oh, I like that, I like this, I like that. Yeah. Bigger, better, nicer. Oh, yeah. it's got to be loud. No, it's got to be quieter. 
You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we have to learn from a young age on. It, it's so much better if you learn it. It took me a while. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I was uh, quite old before I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. But you've got to start out at a young age. And if you will read the Bible, and, and don't make it a legalistic thing. I mean, oh God, it's 9 o'clock. I've got to read my Bible. i got to go. Uh, or today is the day. Of, no, no, no. Go with God. Just let the Lord show you. Some days you're not going to be able to do your Bible reading and study. You, you, you're just so... Life has so many challenges that you just can't do it. Yeah. So anyhow, let's go to... Uh, uh, we did the Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, God, and He will direct your paths. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Psalm 37. Uh, this is a, a wonderful little psalm where we learn to do a few things. First of all, verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall you dwell in the land and you will be fed. Mm -hmm. Now, in this particular verse, uh, the psalmist was saying, dwell in your land. He was speaking about the Israelites back then. Now, here, so for, for, for us today, what we need to do is say, dwell in our home, our places where we are. Yeah. So let's read that again. I like to repeat things because sometimes I've been uh, to places where pastors were teaching and pe teachers were teaching, and they just went over so fast, you you didn't get it. So I'll, sometimes I like to repeat it because that way helps us. it helps us to learn. Yeah, so trust in the Lord and do good, so shall you dwell in your home and you will be fed. Amen. God will take care of us. Yes. If, if we as Christians would understand that once we receive Christ and we begin to follow God, we may not be perfect, but once we enter that that's the realm of glory. Yeah. I believe, you can't find this anywhere in the Bible, but it's just like the Lord has shown me. When, when we receive Christ and we're converted and we know that we have a destiny and that destiny is, is good, I believe our DNA has changed. I, you know, I'm just, that's sort of yeah. my thought. It, yeah. It's because you're so different. Now, uh, you used to go, oh, man, yeah, the worldly things just drew us. And we will still be in the world, and some of those things after we get saved still tend to sort of want to, we want some of it. But when we're saved, it's, it is so unbelievable mm -hmm. how God will lead you to the truth, and he'll guide you in every way. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's go to the next one. Uh, verse 4, delight yourself, that is, take great pleasure, take great pleasure also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Now, wait a minute, wait, we got to wait here. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard that that verse can be, you know, I'm going to pray for a Rolls Royce car, and God, I need it, I need it, I want it. Uh, it's not, you know, yeah. that's not, that's not what that verse means. He will give you the things that you need that are necessary for life. And sometimes there are things that we want that maybe not may not have any influence on the kingdom of God, but he will sometimes give you, this, and many times will give you the things that you would like to have. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily always, but he will do that. Mm -hmm. God is a good God, and he knows. And he know if he knows that we can handle that that we're asking for, right. he will yeah. allow it. Right. So, we'll say it again. Delight yourself, take great pleasure also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So the next one would be verse 5 of chapter 37, Psalm 37. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He will bring it to pass. That is, whatever your experience, trust in the Lord. Commit your way to Him. Commit When you commit something, you're, you're handing it over. Right. Yeah. Here, Lord, here. I have this thing that I need. I have these problems. I, I need, Lord, I need some funds to do this. Uh, Lord, I need to be able to, to talk to my kids. I need to talk to my parents. We've committed your way. You've handed your way over to God, and He will take care of it. He, he will provide the need. He will provide the answers. 
He will guide you and lead you and get you to say the exact right thing to the right person at the right time. If we yeah. commit ourselves, give ourselves totally to God. And uh, I can hear somebody saying, mm -hmm. they heard a radical. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, I'm a radical, I'm a radical child of God. I, mean, I believe that God is real. And I believe that he hears and answers yes. prayer. And I yes. believe the judgment yes. day is coming. And I know that when judgment day is coming, I'm going to be on the road. They must see each side. Yes. I'm not going to be on the other side. Amen. And that is the whole thing that I want to try to get across today. There are consequences for not following God. Yeah. Yeah. One day we're going to sit, we're going to be on our knees before Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Every person. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're good or evil. Uh, one, you're going, one of them is going to be one place. One's going to be another. Okay. And when you're before that throne of God, but before Jesus Christ, he's, he's going to, uh, you know, I can't tell you exactly what he's going to say because I don't know the mind of God. But I'm sure that he's going to ask you, well, what have you done for me? Mm -hmm. And he's going to read your life story to you. And he's going to see exactly what went on in your life. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want him to be able to say, well done, yes, good right. and faithful yes. servant. Because the sad thing is, I believe there are many people who claim to be Christians. Listen, I've taught in a lot of places. I know a lot of stuff about the way people are, mm -hmm. the way they think, and what they think they are, which they're really not. Not being judgmental, just being the fruit inspectors. <laughs> yes, that's right. So to speak. Mm -hmm. Well, now we've gotten three of them. Trust in the Lord, mm -hmm. delight yourself in the Lord, take great pleasure, commit. Hand over your way to the Lord, mm -hmm. and He'll guide you. He'll lead you. For the young people here today, let God begin to read the Bible. And, and you'll say, I don't understand it. Just take one part of the Bible. Don't, don't worry about the whole thing. Just take a part that you can understand. Usually somewhere in the New Testament is the best place to start. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you that if you will be faithful, Pray and ask God to help you understand what that means. And if you don't understand it, there's always adults that can help you. Yeah. And sometimes adults need other adults. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now let's go to, um, I guess that'd be the last one on the third. Well, no, we'll go on a couple more. The, uh, verse number seven of Psalm 37. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Now there's the one that really gets used to get me. Right. God, I got a hand it, Lord. I mean, I just, Lord, you know, you know the need. God has a time for everything, mm -hmm. and He will answer that prayer in His time and in His way. That's right. That's what's that's what's wonderful. So let's read that. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not because of the one who prospers in His way, mm -hmm. because of the wicked man who brings wise devices to work. I'm sure that some of you here have have said, and you know, I mean, you're not really being judgmental. You're just being a fruit inspector. You know, it's, it's common saying. Well, why does that guy? Look at them, they carouse around, they do all that stuff. And you know, I've seen them down at the bar. And look at all the stuff. They got a boat, they got a ski doo, they got a motorcycle, they got a boat. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Don't fret over what the That's world right. does. That's right. Be happy with what God has given you. He will give you what you need. Yes. And sometimes what you want. Yeah. It's so sad. We just want to be, we see what the world has and we want what the world has. We don't need the stuff, the junk that the world has. Mm -hmm. And conveniences, oh, I love them. I, I thank God for them. Mm -hmm. But I, something I have noticed, I've been around for a while, a few years. <laughs> the more junk you get, <laughs> the more time it takes to take care of that junk. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm talking about even appliances. You know, you, you see a TV and they, they had all these new things, all these new things you could add in your kitchen, your garage. Man, by the time you got all that stuff, you'd be broke and it'd be so much stuff you wouldn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of stuff and my family knows. Well, let's not go there, okay? <laughs> and it's cluttered. 
Sorry about that. Anyhow, <laughs> sorry, family, I, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> I've said that for the last 15 years. I'm working on it. <laughs> All right. Well, anyhow, let's go. So we've got, we've got the trust in the Lord, delight yourself in the Lord, commit or hand yourself your way over to the Lord, and rest in the Lord. This is one of the hardest things to do for Christians is we pray uh, we pray for people, loved ones, or certain situations that are really important in our life. And um, it's so hard to rest and wait for God to answer that prayer. You know, like this rain that we just got, uh, it started way back. It's been dry. We, our, our pond, our slot pond has not been full for a long time. And I kept praying and asking the Lord. And then remember, you don't, don't keep, you don't have to keep repeating always over and over once you prayed that prayer a number of times then you begin to thank god god i know you heard my prayer and i know it's you know it's important to me and lord we really need that water for for the cows and he will hear that prayer but we're so impatient we're, we watch a tv show and we get from birth to death in an hour we're yeah. so used to that everything yes. happening get on the phone get it done you know mm -hmm. like that but we cannot wait patiently. We have to know when you pray a prayer, when you pray a prayer, you must already see the answer. Now, is God going to answer every time? No. God has, has several ways of answering prayer for us. He'll say yes, no, mm -hmm. and later. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's it. That's how it is. He's going to answer it. And sometimes we're in dire need, and he will answer that prayer. I've seen it answered. answered. Mm -hmm. I was driving a van loaded with firewood many, many years ago. And uh, before I left home, my dad told me, he said, Kevin, you need, you need to replace that front tire. I said, no, it looks like it'll, make, it'll be all right. I got about two-thirds of the way down to where I was going and had a blowout on the right front tire. And with 2,700 pounds of wood behind me, and it was just a little wooden brick lattice work behind me. And that thing blew, and there was nothing I could do. I had all that weight, and it just it said, went over, and it went in the ditch, and it was muddy, it was water, and I just sunk down. Well, I uh, didn't listen to wise advice. So we need to learn to listen to wise advice, too, and learn to rest and wait patiently for God. Yeah. Fret not because the one who prospers in his way, because the man who brings wicked vices to pass. To be content. Yeah. We'll find that in Philippians 4.11. Now, when I finish today, I have a, a list of some of the scriptures that I use. I may not give them all to you, but uh, you can have copies of that. Yeah. And then at, at the number, uh, verse 8, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not in the way to do evil. Uh, you know, we can be angry and sin not, but have you ever been driving down the road and somebody is just <laughs> no passing zone? It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. No passing zone. And you just say, stupid. <laughs> I, 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 I admit, I mean, I, I admit. And, uh, you know, we don't need to. Just let it go and say, Lord, well, don't let me get in the way. Don't let me get in his way. I'll pull over if I have to. But yeah, we don't. Anger is, is a choice. Yeah. We choose to be angry. Yes, that's right. Okay, let's go. Now, let's, let, let me go one more time. I'm going to read it. If you want to remember this, it's pretty simple. Trust, mm -hmm. delight, mm -hmm. commit, mm -hmm. and rest. Yes. And then cease from anger. But I'd like those four. Trust, delight, commit, and rest your way. Amen. Rest before the Lord. Now, I want to go right quick. I don't know how much time. Uh, can we go till 2 o'clock? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. We won't. We'll be finished. We've got plenty of time. Uh, I got to thinking about something here about a week or so ago. Tithing our time to God, mm -hmm. that's not in the Bible, but if, if we were to tithe every day 
Ten percent of our time to God, that would be two point four hours. That'd be pretty hard to do, really. No, I'm not saying to do it. I'm not I'm not making that. I'm just saying, but you know, I wonder what our life would be like. What 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 the the church? I mean, all yeah. across the board, every every denomination. Oh, what would the church be like if every person in there really committed? Uh, 2.4 hours a day. Yeah, that, that would be getting legalistic. You, you understand? But I'm just saying, we need to spend time with God. Now, it doesn't mean that you every day. I don't read the Bible every day because I have verses and things that I'm, I'm studying because I do teach over at my church from time to time. Uh, I, I, just, I do a lot of meditating on God's Word and, and take those things and I put them to use in my life. Mm -hmm. And, and I find things to thank God for every day. And, and, and all of a sudden, these verses that I read, they, they come into my mind. I said, God, that's so good. I needed that right now. And so just give some time to God. Amen. And uh, because we don't want to say, uh, we don't want to be before Jesus at that Bema seat, the, the throne where he's going to be uh, judging from. You see, the Christians are going to be judged for the works they have done for the kingdom of heaven. The unbelievers are going to be judged for their sin. Mm -hmm. They're going that way. And we're going to be judged to receive rewards. Mm -hmm. he, he gives God, Jesus will give us rewards for the things we have done, for the people we have brought to Christ, and for the goodness that we have in our life, and, and, and uh, the good things. But here's the thing. Not everybody is going to have a lot of works, so they won't have enough rewards. So the rewards that we receive, we won't keep them, but we will place them. As we are receiving those rewards, we place them at the throne before Christ. Amen. That's right. yes. And you don't want you don't want to be on the side where He says, "Depart from me, I never knew you." Yeah. And if you do not know Jesus Christ, and you do not want to follow. That's what he's going to say. That's yeah. where you're going to be. And you're going to a place called hell. I mean, let's face it. We don't like to hear that word. But there, there's only two ways. Right. Up or down. Yeah. I want to go up. Yes. Amen. Okay. Psalm 42, verse 1. Anybody know what that one is? We're talking about all mm -hmm. these things that you need to be doing. To, be, to come closer to God, the ones we just went over in Psalm 37. But Psalm 42, 1 is, this is one that I really love. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants after you, O God. In other words, in your, in your life, you need to be making God first. God first. God first. Mm -hmm. What happens if you do that? Listen to me very carefully. Your face will begin to glow. You will have that smile. And, and people will stop you. I've had it to happen. Or I've, I've seen people who I knew were Christians. I said, you're a believer, aren't you? See, I sure am. You will have that glow about you. And you will have a joy in your heart. Because I know that when I go out of this world, when I pass out of here, I'm going to be with Jesus Christ. In the, and we're going to read that verse in a few minutes. Uh, I'm going to be in, in a place that's, that's really wonderful. Yeah, amen. So, except Christ. If there's somebody here today that has not said, I am. Lord, I know I've done wrong things in my life. Every, we've done it. Everybody. There's not a person that is not, has not sinned. Right. Everybody has. Yeah. You just confess your sins to Jesus and, and say, God, I, I'm sorry I did all those things. And I just want to receive the things that Jesus did for me. I want to receive that. I want to be a believer. I want to be able to follow hard after. I want to be like that deer that runs for that water. Mm -hmm. And, and in a hot, on a hot day, I've watched cattle just come running to the water trough. I want to go to the, to the water trough of God's, God's Word. And, and until you read and study God's Word, you cannot have that. Yeah. You, you don't have that, that, the things that fulfill your life. He wants to fill you, and this is this is the filler. This is this is, this fills the emptiness in your life. Yes, that's right. That's right. 
I always tell my church a few times, sort of, I, have a, I like to have a little fun every once in a while. And I said, well, I see all the people, I say, yeah, see, everybody has their Bible, and, and, you know, I don't usually tell them to hold it up. I did that only one time that I can remember. And, uh, and uh, I see them holding up their little device, and I said, ah, remember, remember, that's an electronic device, and it can fail. Mm -hmm. Right when you're trying to read the Word of God, mm -hmm. this is life. I received this at a church. That church I mentioned earlier that I pastored at for about six weeks, and uh, they uh, it was uh, right around Christmas time, and they gave me this Bible. It was in 1989, and uh, it's uh, it quite well. Listen, the Bible is your life. Read your Bible, mm -hmm. study it. Okay, let's move on. We need to have a longing in our heart, a, a, a great desire for everything that God has for us. And, and there's so many good, actually, if, if you like to read, there are so many good, interesting stories. Now, some of the Old Testament stories, <laughs> they, they get, <laughs> they're pretty tough to read. But there are such good things that God has for us. Mm -hmm. This is the treasure that you need to seek after. Mm -hmm. But remember, don't, don't become legalistic. And this, this happens. I've seen it happen. Uh, I knew a friend of ours that really became very legalistic. She had been all the other way, and then she became a Christian. She became very legalistic. And I know my wife knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> a wonderful lady. But she just went, you know. Mm -hmm. And we had an old man that used to be our, uh, sort of our mentor. And he said, Calvin? Don't let the pendulum swing from one side to the other. Yeah. Keep that thing balanced in the middle. That's right. And that's the way we need to be. We need to balance, get balanced in, in our Christian life and mm -hmm. the way we do things. And, and Christian life is so easy. <coughs> but persecution does come mm -hmm. and will come. So I, I need to inform you that we don't know how or when, but I think most of you are wise enough and have, have enough information about what's going on in the world that, that we are headed for some uh, pretty rough gravel, no, rock roads maybe. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay. Memorize scripture. Oh, I can't memorize scripture. I'm too old. I don't have a good memory. Here's how you do it. You take a verse that really touches your life and just read it every day. Study it. And then sit back and say, oh, the first three words, uh, three word, four words, five words. Keep doing it and you will memorize scripture and then you can take that with you and you can use it. And, and the Bible is, is full of everything. You want to know something about, about finances? It's there. You want to know something about uh, your kids, your family, your mother, your father. You want to know? It's there. It's all there. God will, the, the Word of God will tell you how to do that. Memorize Scripture. Amen. That's uh, Colossians 3.16 and Psalm 119, 10 and 11. Well, why should we do that? In Acts chapter 17, verse 28, it says, In Him, in Christ. We live and move and have our being. So, Lord, I, I'm here today. Lord, I know you're here. I, yeah. I feel it. I feel the presence of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and sometimes I'd like, to, I'd like to be more articulate with yeah. being able to present the Word of God. I just do what God showed me to do, and then I told him, I always tell God, I said, okay, I want you to hide me. Let me speak the words that you want. Don't let me speak something that I'm not supposed to speak. And God is faithful. Yes. He will do that. Yes. So what are some of the requirements to do all this? Micah 6, 8. Anybody know what that is? Mm -hmm. He has showed you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before your God. So simple. Yeah. So simple. So good. 
Psalm 63, 8. My soul follows hard after you, O Lord. In other words, you're pursuing the things of God. Amen. So, how are you going to do all this when you go to work? <laughs> you, may, you ever think about that? Because when you go to your work area, it's a whole different, it's a whole different ball of wax. You're, you're working with people who are unbelievers. You're working with bosses that are, that are maybe not. Well, you, you know what I mean. Because sometimes you have a real good boss, and sometimes you have bosses who really are not good at all. So follow hard after the things of God, and just you, you, you have to get to where you ignore them. Just pray for them. Mm -hmm. You got a spouse, or you got a kid, or somebody that's not doing what they're supposed to. I guarantee you, if you keep praying, it it'll they'll change. Right. I hear stories all the time. Say, man, I, did you? And this boss is so bad, and this boss left. Mm -hmm. Got a new boss who's a Christian. I mean, it happens. We can pray. God answers prayer. Yes, yes. And you, if if you're a, uh, if you're not used to praying, I mean, I don't know, I don't know the congregation here, but uh, he'll start praying. God is, is God going to answer that prayer? No, you say God. When you pray, you have to believe that God is going to do something. He may not do it. He may not do it in your lifetime. But then again, he may do it right away, and it may be a while. Mm -hmm. yes, God is in charge. We don't let him be in charge. Too many times, we want to set ourselves on the throne. I have this thing to do. I know how to do it, and I'm going to do it, and we never ask God to come and lead us. Yeah. We have to put God into things that we do. Uh, you're climbing a ladder, uh, or you're doing something dangerous, like some of us, I, I don't do it anymore. I, I turned the chainsaw <laughs> over to... <laughs> the guys. Yeah. But anyhow, and we pray uh, when we do something, say, oh, and the Lord will remind you I'm, I'm grinding some metal or something or sawing something. Put your, put your goggles on, you know. Mm -hmm. And God will speak to us and help us in everything that we do. All right, let's, let's move on very quickly here. So the glorious future we have, let's uh, turn to Revelation Chapter 21, I think most of you are, if you've been you reading your Bible, you know, you know what's there. That's the last book of the Bible, second to the last chapter. That's Revelation chapter 21. Let's read, I'm just going to read a, about five or six, seven verses. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And be their God. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Oh, praise God. Yes. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to him that is a thirst of the fountain of the waters of life. This is our promise. Uh, when, when we pass from this earth, if we're, if we're believers, this is what we're going to see. I can't explain it. It, it sounds so almost like, you know, can that really be? I mean, is it really going to be like that? Yes, it's going to be like that. What God says in his word, it's going to happen. Yes. And we need to look forward to that. And our life here needs to reflect that. So that's, that's why right. we're running after God. We're running at, to see what God has for us. That's right. Yes. I know it sounds, you know, especially for maybe the younger people, say this, that's it's so hard. I've got all the things I want to do. I, I like to do this, and that's good. We need to do the things that that uh, fit with the skills that God gave us. God gives us gifts and skills. Mm -hmm. 
And we need to operate in that. I've known people who have been out of their skill field, they were miserable. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> somebody says, I need a job. That's been a real problem for a lot of people, is finding a good job. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have to just take a very menial job. But get, here's the thing. Be thankful when you get a job that even if you don't like it, but you needed the job to pay bills, be thankful that you have that job and be faithful at it. I can tell them. I, have, I don't tell many stories, but I have to tell you a story. I needed a job real bad. I had been very, very sick. Very sick. And I needed a job. And I looked like a dead man. I weighed about 135 pounds. I don't weigh much more than that. <laughs> and uh, I needed a job real bad. And um, one of the government agencies there in Gonzales had an opening. And it just happened to be that two of the people in that office knew me. And so I applied and I got the job. And it was clerical work. And I Mm -hmm. <laughs> like computer, entering words. But anyhow, it was a job. And, and it provided for what we need. And I got to where God said, okay, be content with where you are. Yeah. God is so good. Amen. I think we're going to finish up there. I want to go back now, right quick. I like to do this. Knowledge, gain knowledge, understand what you've learned, you become wise over time. Trust in God, mm -hmm. delight in God, commit your way to God, rest in God, and cease from anger. Yeah. And with that, I'd like to close, but what I want to do, <clears throat> I'd like to pray for the congregation. Yeah. So if you'll bow your head. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the wonderful people here. And Lord, I just ask right now, I know that everybody has some kind of a need. And Father, I just pray that at this very moment, for those who have financial problems, that you would make a way, that you would make provision and Lord, you said that if we pray and ask and believe in faith, that you will hear our prayers and answer. I pray for those people who have infirmity of any kind that includes all the diseases, all the, all the things that affect us, the pain, the sorrow, everything. Father, I pray that you begin to minister to each person. I pray that if there's any person here who has not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that right now at your seat, you don't have to come up here. Right now at your seat, you say, God, I confess all of my sins. I repent. I don't want to go back to that. I won't do those again. I want to follow you. I believe that Jesus died for me. And I know that the blood that he shed for me was so that I wouldn't have to die for my sins. Just receive Christ if you've not received him before. And Father, I pray that as we go into this... Uh, this following week and from now on throughout this year let us begin to trust in you delight in you, commit our way to you to rest in you, to follow hard after your ways to be as that deer that runs after that water and they're thirsty let us thirst for your things God for your word, for your ways and then Lord let us not keep everything in, let the things that you've taught us Father, I ask you that you, as we go uh, out this week Share with others. Don't hold it in. God expects us to be witnesses. And, and we can be a witness. And, and if we're too shy, Lord, if people are too shy, Father, I ask you to let, let their countenance and their word and the way they do their work, let that be the testimony that will bring others to come to know you. So, Father, I thank you for your love and your mercy. And thank you for all that you've done. And I thank you for the attentive audience today. And, Lord, be the words that were spoken here uh, be from you uh, to the hearts of your people. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.